The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Welcome to Spartan Sports Report. I'm Justin Allegri. San Jose State football suffering another heartbreaking loss this time at Nevada, 37 to 34 in overtime, and now fall to four and six on their season. We'll recap that game with San Jose State head coach Ron Carragher. We'll also look ahead to the final road game of the 2015 season for San Jose State at Hawaii. All that to come here on Spartan Sports Report. But first, let's go back to the highlights from Reno. San Jose State on the road at Nevada looking for their fifth win of the year and trying to sweep the two Nevada schools on the road in the same season. Spartans get the ball first but couldn't get much rhythm going in the first quarter and they go three and out with Potter getting sacked by Corey Rush for a three yard loss. Nevada did have it going in the first quarter though and Don Jackson rushes hard and forward for an 11 yard gain before being tripped up after a first down to the San Jose State 31. The next play, a toss into the flat for wide receiver Jericho Richardson, who scampers along for 12 yards, moving the Wolfpack chains again. Back to Jackson on the next play, plows right on ahead for nine yards to the Spartan 10. After another first down, it is quarterback Tyler Stewart with the play action, finding wide receiver Richardson again for the opening drive touchdown, and the Wolfpack led it 7-0. San Jose State would try to respond on the next drive, but Austin Lopez misses a field goal try from 39 yards away. Then Nevada suffers the same fate. Brent Zuzo pushes his kick from 50 yards away wide to the right side, and the score stood at 7-0 after one quarter of play. Wolfpack had the ball at the beginning of the second, and Stewart used his legs for the most successful run of the day. It was a pickup of 15 yards and a first down to the Spartan 30. But the defense would hold, and back came in Zuzo, this time a try from 27 yards away, and just sneaks it inside the upright, and the lead grew to 10-0 Wolfpack. Here was a big turning point in the first half, though. Tyler Irvin takes the kickoff back 71 yards and gave the Spartans momentum at the Nevada 29-yard line. From here, Kenny Potter on the zone read sprints to the outside for eight yards. Three plays later, Potter steps up into the pocket and delivers the throw on the run and on target to Tim Crawley, which was the start of a big day for him. A touchdown made it 10-7 Wolfpack. And they weren't done in the half either. San Jose State forces a three and out, and Thomas Tucker out of the backfield gets a catch and works into Nevada territory. This drive would result in a fumble recovery in the end zone by Tim Crawley, and San Jose State had a halftime lead at 14-10. Spartans then started the second half with a quick slant and connection to Hansel Wilson for 28 yards to the Wolfpack 24. After that, why not go to the John Mackey Award semifinalist? That is tight end Billy Freeman snagging his team high fifth touchdown of the season from 23 yards away and extending the Spartan lead 21 to 10. Nevada would not go down quietly though. Six plays into their next drive, James Butler takes off and takes it to the house from 58 yards away. The touchdown and again it was a one score game 21 to 17. On the next possession after they would also take the lead on this pass to Hassan Henderson from 24 yards away and Nevada fought back to regain the lead. How would the Spartans respond though? They would start by Potter scrambling and picking up seven yards. Then a fake of a run to Irvin and a pass down the sideline to Thomas Tucker who hauls it in for a 21 yard gain to the Wolfpack 40. From there, it's Tyler Irvin grinding out 14 of his 64 yards on the ground in the game and setting up a first and 10 from the 13 yard line. Then Potter throws the jump ball into the end zone. It's Tim Crawley time again for San Jose State. He makes the leaping catch, and it was his third touchdown of the afternoon. And he gave the Spartans the lead back 28-24. to Spartans would later add on a field goal after a seven-minute drive that extended the lead 31-24. to So Nevada had the ball, needing a touchdown to keep the game alive. And on fourth and three, Stewart runs onto the sideline for a first down pickup to the Spartan 39, keeping the game alive for the Wolfpack. The very next play is a pass to tight end Jared Gibson for 27 yards into the red zone, but the clock kept ticking. And with 43 seconds left, they give it to Don Jackson who bowls his way into the end zone for the score. Nevada would then decide to go for the extra point, just the kick to tie the game at 31. 
So San Jose State had the ball with 36 seconds left and two timeouts remaining to work with. Kenny Potter tied up the laces and went to work, juking his defenders and nabbing 21 yards on the carry. So then it came down to Austin Lopez again. This one a 51-yard field goal try, and the kick really never had a chance as Lopez barely got it off before the ball was blocked. It was picked up by Nevada, but saved by the holder for San Jose State, Chris Kearney, who makes the game-saving tackle to end regulation. So we go to overtime for the second time this season for San Jose State, and they would get the ball first but not get a first down and be forced to try another field goal. This time it will be from 35 yards away, and San Jose State does convert on it with Austin Lopez. They have a lead 34-31. to But Nevada could win it with a touchdown. They fire a pass to Hassan Henderson for 12 yards and a first down gain. The very next play, they fake it, and then they toss it out to the wide open tight end Gibson who waltzes in for the game-winning score. And so San Jose State falls in overtime, 37-34 at the hands of Nevada Wolfpack. Nevada improves to 6-4 and four this year, 4-2 and two in Mountain West Conference play as San Jose State falls to 4-6 and six overall, 3-3 three and three in conference action. Kenny Potter had some nice numbers in this game, 187 yards passing and three touchdowns with 116 yards on the ground as well. Tim Crawley had two receiving touchdowns. He also recovered that touchdown in the end zone, making him the first spot with three scores in a single game since Chandler Jones did it against Fresno State back in 2013. Meanwhile, Tyler Stewart passed for 174 yards and three scores with James Butler running for 119 on the ground and a touchdown. San Jose State falls in overtime on the road 37-34 to Nevada. Time now for this week's Lexus Drive of the Game. And for the Drive of the Game, we go back to Reno in the fourth quarter with the Spartans trailing and trying to drive to take a lead. That's right, it's a Nevada lead 24-21 as San Jose State gets the ball with 9.49 left in regulation. They would start by Potter scrambling and picking up seven yards. Then they fake the run to Irvin and pass down the sideline to Thomas Tucker who grabs 21 yards and gets it down to the Nevada Wolfpack 40-yard line. From there, Tyler Irvin grinds out a 14-yard pickup and another first down, 14 of his 64 yards on the ground in the game, and it was first and 10 from the 13-yard line. Then Potter throws into the end zone, and Tim Crawley makes the leaping catch, and it was his third touchdown of the game to give the Spartans a lead, 28 to 24. Overall, the drive lasted eight plays, going 75 yards in three minutes and 33 seconds late in the fourth quarter. The drive of the game is brought to you by your Northern California Lexus dealer, who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. This week's Bay 101 Casino player of the game is quarterback Kenny Potter, who not only put up the numbers in this one, but also did it while playing with strep throat. Yikes! He only threw for 187 yards and three touchdowns with 116 yards on the ground as well. For his phenomenal effort this week, he is Bay 101 Casino's player of the game. Bay 101 Casino, San Jose's place to play. We check in now on the Kinder's Barbecue Mountain West scoreboard, and it really is coming down to the wire for some teams now. Five eligible for a bowl, Air Force, Boise State, New Mexico, San Diego State, and Nevada, all with six or more wins in the conference. Two teams with five wins, Utah State and Colorado State, and then San Jose State, the only four-win team in the Mountain West Conference as of right now. Remember, there are six guaranteed bowl spots, but a possibility of eight tie-ins overall. So we take a look at this week's Kinder's Barbecue Mountain West scoreboard. UNLV was at Colorado State, and UNLV loses on the road. Colorado State jockeying for position, of course, 49-35, to the final there. Utah State on the road at Air Force, and Air Force gets it done, 35-28 to over the Aggies. And they are the top team now in the Mountain Division, are the Air Force Academy Falcons, because Boise State lost at home to New Mexico. New Mexico becoming bowl eligible with a 31-24 to win on the road in Boise. San Diego State gets their sixth consecutive win overall and they are now 6-0 in Mountain West Conference play as they defeated Wyoming rather easily 38-3. Fresno State on the road at Hawaii. They got a win as uh, it was 42-14 final score from the islands. That's a look at Kinder's Barbecue Mountain West scoreboard for the weekend. We'll take our first break here on Spartan Sports Report. When we return, we'll take a look at opening night for both the men's and women's basketball teams last weekend. More to come on Spartan Sports Report. 
It's back. It's Nissan's holiday event. Now with special Black Friday offers. Choose Altima with 0% APR for up to 72 months, or Sentra with 0% for up to 72 months. Get to Nissan, proud partner of the San Jose State Spartans. Come enjoy a California-grown experience at Una Mas Mexican Grill. From our local produce and freshest ingredients to our unique authentic Mexican dishes and salsa bar, Una Mas truly is California-grown. Since the first Una Mas opened in San Jose over 20 years ago, we've worked hard to use the freshest local ingredients to make the dishes you love. Because when we care this much about our food, everything is going to taste better, naturally. Una Mas Mexican Grill. We taste better. Welcome back here on Spartan Sports Report. It was opening night last Friday and Saturday for men's and women's basketball at San Jose State. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from those two games. Six Spartans scored in double figures last Friday as the San Jose State women's basketball team defeated Southern Oregon 92-78 in the season opener. Those six players were Nyree Harris, Jasmine Smith, Rihanna Bird, Paris Baird, Ellie Stevens and Anaya Baker. San Jose State controlled the boards in the win 52 to 36 and it had a 24 to 8 advantage on the offensive glass and turned those into 21 second chance points for the Spartans who cruised to the 92 to 78 season opening win over Southern Oregon. All right, I get it. It's not the opening night game, but it was a win for the men's basketball team. Their first against a Division I opponent since beating Nevada on the road on February 18, 2014. It ends a 21-game losing streak dating back to last season and an 11-game losing streak at home as they defeated Montana 64-61 in their second game of the season. Frank Rogers finished with a game-high 16 points and 10 rebounds. Princeton Onwas and Gary Williams Jr. pitched in 11 and 10 points overall. And Ryan Wellage had a double-double for the second straight game with 10 points and just as many on the glass as well with three assists. The Spartans head on the road to face Montana State on Friday night starting at 7.05 Pacific time. We'll take another break here on Spartan Sports Report. When we return, San Jose State football head coach Ron Carragher will join us to talk about the overtime loss in Reno. More to come when we return. Come enjoy a California-grown experience at Una Mas Mexican Grill. From our local produce and freshest ingredients to our unique authentic Mexican dishes and salsa bar, Una Mas truly is California-grown. Since the first Una Mas opened in San Jose over 20 years ago, we've worked hard to use the freshest local ingredients to make the dishes you love. Because when we care this much about our food, everything is going to taste better, naturally. Una Mas Mexican Grill. We taste better. Way up in the North Pole, a penguin loaded a toy car onto a racetrack. Zoom. It took off. Going faster and faster until finally it stopped. Right in our driveway. Really? Yeah. The Lexus December to Remember sales event is here. Lease the 2016 IS200 Turbo for $349 a month for 36 months, and we'll make your first month's payment. See your Lexus dealer. Welcome back on Spartan Sports Report. Now joined by San Jose State football head coach Ron Carragher. And coach, uh, I hate to use the term again, but another heartbreaking loss for this team. And this one just comes in back-to-back -back weeks. It was. Uh, just challenging, tough. Uh, I, I was proud of our guys. I thought we played hard for the second week in a row and unfortunately it came up short and you know I, 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 we're not satisfied with that and and definitely don't want that to be the norm but it was back to back two tough yeah. losses and and uh, this one was an overtime and just didn't get it done and unfortunately but a, a great game uh, unfortunately uh, we came up short talked last week about how the team handled that one point loss and now this coupled on top of it how are they dealing with it yeah it's tough I think um, I, I'm conveying to them how important it is to not let the same team beat you twice mm -hmm. you know don't let that carry over into the next week the the loss the the cloud uh, of, of frustration but we have to be able to shake it off we say the 24-hour rule just right. hey you move beyond we got to refocus on the new opponent and uh, I, they're resilient they will bounce back seemed like a flat start in the first quarter for the Spartans. They just couldn't really, really get some sort of rhythm going. But after that, I mean, everything was working, it seemed like. Yeah, uncharacteristic. I think we've been pretty good this year starting off. Yeah. Get our opening drives, whether we're getting a touchdown or a field goal, 
Uh, we've, we've done that in a lot of our games, and this one wasn't. We just weren't able to move the chains, unfortunately, but we did pick it up there mm -hmm. in the second quarter, and I think Tyler Urban's kickoff has yes. really ignited us to, to, we got great field position on a 70-some yard turn off, uh, kickoff return, and we were able to uh, punch it in. Kenny Potter, boy, he mm -hmm. keeps uh, continuing to just improve, improve, improve in this game. 187 yards in the air, mm -hmm. three touchdowns. He also had 116 on the ground. We talked so much mm -hmm. about Stewart's ability to run yeah. 6.1 yards per carry for Kenny Potter in yeah, this game. Yeah, no, he played really well, made good decisions uh, with the football, but just uh, being able to make people miss in the open field, mm -hmm. I think uh, instead of a six or eight yard gain, some of those turned into 30 yard gains. So yeah. Some of those runs, uh, just a really all out, uh, very good ball carry with the football under his arm. Made nice decisions to get rid of the ball too at, at critical he did. times. He did, it's important to not turn over to the wrong team, it's important not to get sacks, and, and I think Kenny made some, some real good decisions. Well, you, I asked you on the post game show, Coach, Tim Crawley, sometimes we, we kind of kind of look at him and take him mm -hmm. for granted uh, right. because he just goes out there and gets it done every yeah. game. Three touchdowns in this game and and won a pivotal one with the recovery of a fumble in the end zone. Yeah, he was at the right place at the right time, and that's Timmy. You know, the story of uh, uh, of his success is he knows what to do. He's a smart football player, very headsy football player, and he can, he can read between man or zone coverage, mm -hmm. and he just has a knack for getting open, and he makes good plays, and so all in all, just a, it's a pleasure to coach a young man like that. He's a, you know, off the field, a great ambassador for our university, an honor student, all the above, Timmy Crawley. It's unfortunate, though, because there is mm. some inconsistency in the kicking game uh, this mm -hmm. season with Austin Lopez, and it, it showed last week with that 46-yarder, I yeah. think it was, and now this week again with a 39-yarder and then the 51-yard that was blocked, but uh, inconsistency in the kicking game yeah, is a Yeah, it's frustrating because you really want your, your, your kicking game, field goal in particular, to be so consistent mm -hmm. that you know what you're going to get every time you send it out on the field. And at the end of the game, 30, or, yeah, 36 seconds in regulation, do you do you knee it and go to overtime, right. the safer choice, or do you you take a shot? And I think that just showed our confidence in Kenny mm -hmm. making good decisions with the ball, knowing that he would, uh, that he wouldn't force a throw, and uh, knowing that we could play to overtime. But I thought we made a nice drive getting down there into a, right. a makeable kick. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the timing of it, it was a little slow. They did a great job rushing the wide edge and got a hand on it. Unfortunately, we you know, didn't turn into a disaster. We've seen so many ga yes. games in where the, the kick of the last second gets returned for a touchdown. And so all in all, it was great hustle. Uh, there by our, our, our kickoff team, uh, Chris in particular, right. for uh, being able to run them down. That's what I was going to say. That, that was something that maybe not too many people talked about, but the holder in yeah. the play, getting back and making the game-saving tackle. Oh, yeah. Chris Carney's kind of the safety because Austin got leveled on yeah. the, after the block. <laughs> he was on the ground, but Chris Carney got up and made a good uh, game-saving tackle. Well, also, Coach, in this game, Christian Tago, 13 tackles, which puts them over mm -hmm. 100 okay. for the season. That's kind of that, that benchmark to say, all right, you've had a phenomenal year. Yeah. And we, have to, we have to remember, too, he missed a quarter against True. Air Force, and True. he's already at the 100 mark. Right. No, Christian Tago's uh, really coming along. He's a really good leader of our program. He plays hard. He's got good speed and uh, and, and just doing a good job as a, as a young player. And the most exciting is we'll get him back next year. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Coach, is, is mm -hmm. this team just – Washed it away? Have they washed yeah, it away already? I believe so. Yeah, I think so. Practice, they'll be focused, ready to go, and uh, and ready to move on. There's still some good things to play for sure. in this season. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, we'll take a quick break with Coach Carragher and more on Spartan Sports Report when we return. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup honors the nation's best overall collegiate athletic program in each division, men's and women's sports. The prestigious award continues its reign as the crowning achievement in college athletics. To follow your favorite team, like us on Facebook. Find us in USA Today, online, and on Twitter at LS Directors Cup. Over two decades of excellence, the Learfield Sports Directors Cup. It's back. Nissan's holiday event, now with special Black Friday offers. Choose Altima with 0% APR for up to 72 months, or Sentra with 0% for up to 72 months. Get to Nissan, proud partner of the San Jose State Spartans. 
Welcome back on Spartan Sports Report. Continuing to talk with San Jose State head coach Ron Carragher. And coach, this is a Hawaii team, the last mm. road game of the regular season, but a Hawaii team that has just been out of sorts all season long. It seems maybe after their first game of the year and a lot of things going on in this program, but they're really out of sorts right now. Yeah, they, you see up and down. I mean, they start off, they beat a Colorado. Uh, they compete well against Ohio State. And uh, you just wonder maybe early on, playing some of those big opponents sometimes mm -hmm. that can – that can set you back if you don't come out well from a health standpoint. So all in all, we've seen them play well at times. At other times, they've gone through some growing pain. So we know we're going to get their best They, as their season winds down, their last few games for their seniors. We know they're going to put forth uh, a very good effort, and we need to play well. Uh, certainly, it's fresh in our minds that they yeah. got us last year in Spartan Stadium. So it's an important game for us. If we want to have a chance to get to that six wins, um, we've got to take – take one game at a time, and, and this is the first of two ga remaining games. Well, Coach, Norm Chow, the uh, the former head coach of Hawaii, fired mid-year, and a lot of people maybe saw that as a surprise. It seemed like he was on the hot seat to begin the season, but that's got to affect a, a team like this when, when your head coach gets gets axed mid-year. I think most definitely. I've never understood the, the mid-season. Uh, football's the only sport, it seems like, coaches get let go mid-season or they leave before mm -hmm. the bowl game is played right, right. Uh, in early December, and it's unfortunate. I always, I'm just a believer, you, you finish what you start. And I think that, that uh, for whatever reason, I'm not uh, judging wh whatever decisions are made, but I'm just saying that does have an effect on the team mm -hmm. because you go in with a plan and that plan gets uh, adjusted mid-season. So uh, Norm's been a successful coach. Uh, many places he's been, he's sure. coached some great players. So uh, I, I wish him the best in his future. Well, Max Wittick, their quarterback, really had a lot of promise heading mm -hmm. into the year. I know a lot was talked about him, but he has been more of the inconsistent player on this team. 15 interceptions this year. Sure, yeah, he's he turned it over. And I, I wouldn't attribute all those to him. He's thrown some balls that are you know, right on the money that have not been caught mm -hmm. and turned in interceptions. But he is a strong arm quarterback. And I think it says a lot. He was voted as a captain. Uh, right. I've never seen this happen before, but he was voted a captain, yet he had never taken a snap mm -hmm. for their program. So that I think that just says a lot about the respect the team must have for a guy like him. Well, he does have a lot of turnovers in the last five right. games, and they've used Wolseley coming off of the bench. Right. Uh, do you anticipate Wittick still starting? Uh, who do you prepare for? Yeah, interesting. Wolsey has played, has played solid. Uh, I think we have to get ready for both of them, and, and uh, I'm not sure who we can anticipate who will be the starter. I know they both played last game against Fresno, mm -hmm. but uh, we're going to have to be prepared for both quarterbacks. One thing, uh, there's, there's not many positives for Hawaii on the offensive side, but they do some nice job on the defensive side, putting some pressure on the quarterback mm -hmm. and have a nice secondary. Yeah, they, they do. They uh, they have done a good job coverage, man-to-man. -man. They play zone coverage. They mix up their front seven, three down, four down mm -hmm. in certain situations, particularly pass rush situations. Uh, they've got some good athletes, guys we're familiar with from the recruiting side, and certainly guys who made plays on us a year mm -hmm. ago. So uh, we know they have good players. Uh, they have the ability. We definitely have to come and bring our game. Well, Coach, one thing that is an element to their defense that is a whole 30 rushing touchdowns against them this year, and teams have really exploited them. Yeah, people have run the ball well on them and uh, effectively. And I think uh, it's hard to attribute what to maybe some of the inconsistencies, the changing of personnel mm -hmm. and, and, and schemes and whatnot. But uh, all I know, they're, they've, they've had their moments of success, mm -hmm. and I, I have to anticipate they're going to they're gonna show up playing, playing good football. Do you feel the Spartans defensively are, are, are looking at them kind of saying, all right, we need to turn them over a few times in this game because the, the turnover mm -hmm. ratio for them is very, very poor? True. If that continues, we, we should get a, a couple turnovers. And it'd be nice. It really does help a team. And sure. that's something that... Uh, last week we, we missed out on of the turnovers. It, it can really bring you, keep you in a game, and it can also get you ahead significantly. So that's an, such an important statistic. Do you, do you think extra pressure to be applied just yeah, to so force I, that I maybe? Th I think with the, it's so important to be able to force a quarterback to be able to make decisions earlier mm -hmm. than uh, allowing him to be in his comfort zone and, and put pressure on is very important. Well, one element to this game as well is just the unique nature of traveling out to the islands and seeing mm -hmm. some players seeing it yeah. for the first time. Uh, the trip itself always poses challenge. Yeah, it does. We're we're going to go on a Thursday and uh, get a little more acclimated. That's more for the jet lag purposes mm -hmm. of the, so much time on the flight. And then uh, Friday we'll be able to get in a good practice. And uh, the players will have a little downtime, but not much. Right. They'll stay in the area. We, we know it's not, it's not a vacation. It's a business trip. And uh, our guys will, will handle it maturely and uh, definitely know this is, this is an important game. And, and we've got to take care of business and, and come prepared and focused and dialed in and ready to go. All right. That's San Jose State Head Coach Ron Carragher. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Justin. Appreciate it. We're on Spartan Sports Report when we return.
With millions of businesses all in one place, the YP app can help you do pretty much anything. But can it get you to the moon? You'll need a space helmet. YP can do that. You'll need the highest rated hardware stores. Check. YP even has a cheap gas finder, which is perfect for longer trips. The even more powerful, so much more than a search engine yellow pages. YP can do that. Way up in the North Pole, a penguin loaded a toy car onto a racetrack. Zoom. It took off. Going faster and faster until finally it stopped right in our driveway. Really? Yeah. <laughs> the Lexus December to Remember sales event is here. Lease the 2016 IS 200 Turbo for $349 a month for 36 months, and we'll make your first month's payment. See your Lexus dealer. Welcome back on Spartan Sports Report. That does it for this week's episode. Once again, San Jose State on the road for the final time in the regular season at Hawaii this week. And that game on Saturday. Pre-game show on 1590 AM KLIV and the Spartan Radio Network will begin at 730 Pacific time with the kickoff at 8 p.m. Thanks for watching this week. No show next week, so enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday, and we'll see you next time.